Hey guys, welcome back to my channel, or if you're new, welcome. Thank you for stopping by. Um, today I want to share with you kind of um, the deeper, darker side of debt and why we go into it, why we stay in it, and why some people will never in their entire lives be able to get out of it. They will die having debt, being in debt, and probably leaving that debt to their loved ones, um, unfortunately, and passing that along. Um, so it's kind of a, a deeper discussion today. Um, the point of this isn't to like make anybody depressed or, you know, sad or anything, but it's just like we have to be realistic. And if you want to we can't change what we don't acknowledge and so this I'm posting this video because I want you to take a really deep look at yourself and your core really and like what makes you tick because I guarantee you if you are in debt and even if you've been in debt and you are trying you've been trying to get out of it for a really long time and you just like I don't understand why I can't break the cycle, I guarantee you there's a deeper underlying issue and if you don't acknowledge that and you don't address that, you'll never get out of debt. So, um, and I just want to, you know, I'm not a therapist, I'm not a psychologist, I'm not, a, I'm not anything of a professional nature, but I've been to a lot of therapists, I have done a lot of self-discovery, um, and I've educated myself a lot on, you know, how this correlates. And I think that we just need to start talking about it. And if you don't want to talk about it, you know, publicly, like, I, I get that. But I think you need to start opening up, at least within yourself. Um, because if you don't, you're... It, I just think that it's going to be impossible to really, like, get out of debt if you don't understand the deeper underlying issue that you have with money. There's there's a, a bad relationship there. I had a bad relationship with money, like, probably my entire life. Um, like, growing up, my mom wasn't great with budgeting and, you know, Therefore, I didn't really have, like, a good understanding of, of budgeting. I actually learned budgeting through work and, you know, out in the real world. Um, but, again, being able to connect my deeper underlying issues that I had with money, I could you could budget all day long and know exactly, like, okay, I can only spend this much on this. I can only, you know, I'll give myself an allowance of $20 a week for movies and entertainment and whatever. But if you don't dive deeper into the real problem, you're not going to stick to that budget. And that's, you know, obviously, like, you're never going to be able to dig your way out at that point. So when I say figuring out the underlying issue... Personally, I think that this is probably like an Amer maybe an American thing. Um, a lot of people that I've talked to um, that have been in debt or are in debt is because of a shopping addiction. And when I say addiction, it's not really, it's not like, oh ha ha like I'm shopping addict like shopaholic it's not like a funny thing it's a serious thing and like I there's people who literally like they spend their entire rent money on or mortgage payments or whatever on shopping and like they buy Louboutins or something when they need to be like paying for rent and utilities and bills and like I used to be guilty of this all the time. That's actually how I messed up my credit, was I would go shopping 
instead of paying my credit card bill. Um, and at the time, it was, like, such, I mean, I was, like, 20 or something in my early 20s, and so my credit card, my minimums were, like, $26, $30, like, nothing. And, but over time, you know, if you're not, like, if you don't take it seriously and you're not, like, paying bills on time and you start to mess up your credit. And, again, like, I, I was uneducated as well as having underlying issues, but there's like this recipe, like you need to educate yourself, you need to learn, but then you also need to know the underlying issues. So with me, I discovered through a lot of, I went on like a self-discovery journey the last eh, like four or five years and just really learned a lot about myself and why I'm the way I am and I had a shopping addiction addiction because I was trying to cover up pain. Like, you know, I had someone very close to me pass away very unexpectedly and I was really young and I just, I didn't know how to handle it. And so shopping was like, like that friend who was like, there, there, like, you know, encouraging and patting me on the back. And it's something that I could do alone by myself. So I didn't have to talk about anything. It wasn't, I didn't have to like, you don't have to dive deep. You don't have to, shopping isn't like a deep activity. Like you, you go into the store and then, I mean, this is kind of like a side note thing. And I do want to post another video about this, but like for example, Victoria's Secret. I used to shop there for like all my bras and underwear and like sometimes I get go like the pink store or whatever and just get like sleepwear and whatever. That store, they are so good at sucking you in. Like their the aesthetic, the ambiance, the music when you're there, it's like a shopping party and it's like it's super fun I mean whether you go there by yourself or with a bunch of your girlfriends or whatever um, they just create this lifestyle the whole brand is about like fun and flirty and nah, nah, nah. and I mean when you're already kind of maybe in a low point um, and you're not like you're not really wanting to like talk about it open up about it to yourself and you're not like there yet like that's a store that will suck you in and just milk it for all it's worth and you know sh stores like that just sucked me in and it was fun that was my escape that was how I could like I don't have to think about anything I don't have to worry about anything I'll worry about it later and some of these stores were so good that I didn't even have, like, the guilt wouldn't even set in until after, like, much after. Um, but kind of, like, so there'd be other places where I'd go where, like, you kind of, you feel that guilt. Like, you, you're in the store, you're walking around, look at a price tag. Ooh, like, that's definitely, definitely shouldn't buy that. But mm, I'll just put it in my basket, like, walk around with it for a little bit. And there is um, a psychology behind, you know, like everything with marketing, they literally like, they study psychology, like they're psychologists who like tell them or I don't know, they just, they know how to flip it so it works in their advantage, which I think is like super creepy and horrible. Um, whatever like I get you need to sell stuff but at what cost but anyway um so you know you the mo more you hold on to something I think it's like if you walk around with something for like more than 10 minutes or something like you start to grow like an attachment to it so it's like it's harder to let it go um that's why they give you those shopping bags like here want a shopping bag to like put all your stuff in it's like well it's not my stuff yet it's like, no it will be like we're gonna suck you in um but yeah so like 
a lot of times like I would feel that guilt of like oh, I really shouldn't be spending this money I have bills to pay I have this I have that and you know even if like you do have money like if you had, had like saved up or just maybe you have you make a lot of money or whatever it's I feel a little bit conned like when I go into these stores because of all the tactics that are behind the, my shopping experience. It's not it's not just like me walking into a store that's nicely decorated. It's there everything. The color scheme, the way that the shelves are arranged, like everything down to the music down to and every little detail is to get you to spend money. And I think that kind of goes beyond like a shopping experience to like manipulation. That's just my personal opinion. I don't know. And I used to work in marketing and I'm a fan of marketing. I think it's, I think when it's done in an ethical way, it's great and it's fun and I, ha I really enjoyed working in marketing, but I don't like being bamboozled and conned out of money, my hard-earned money. But anyway, um, so, you know, you're walking through the store, have your basket of all this crap you don't probably don't need, and then you get to the checkout counter, and that's when it's like, okay, it's like, you know, this I can back out, you can still back out, like you haven't given the money yet. And sometimes, if there was a really long line, that would be kind of like a good out like like oh I don't I really don't want to sit stand in this line for like you know however long it was like so many people in front of me let me just put it all back and I'll just leave but if there was no line or if the line was moving really quick I would just kind of stand there like you shouldn't buy this you shouldn't buy this you don't need this you don't need any of this and then you know they'd get to me get to the checking counter and they would say stuff sometimes, like if it was a well-trained sales associate, they would be like, oh my god, this is so cute, you're going to look so great in this, like, oh, I wanted to get this, oh, da da da, you should come back and let me know how you like this, da da da, like, literally, like, you know, it's, it's to fluff it up where it's like, so you don't have that guilt, so you go through with the sale, and another like manipulative tactic but I mean I, I get it. it like it is what it is but um yeah and then hand in the credit card hand in the cash whatever had that guilt but I'd have this thing or I'd have these things and then I would go home and like you know kind of look at all the things that I like honestly like I would forget sometimes like what I even bought and then I would get home and take it out of this but the weirdest thing and I don't know like maybe some of you are like this maybe some people aren't because I've heard a lot of people say that they like when they get home they immediately take the tags off and like put it away but like I was I never took tags off um I never I like I wanted to preserve my purchase like I would leave it in the bags I would leave like all the wrapping around it like if I would if it was clothes and I was like gonna actually wear something I would like try to carefully take it out so I didn't like really disturb the packaging but it was like like kind of I don't know I think it was like almost like a, you know reliving the experience like take me back to that memory of when I was in the store and I was shopping and, you know, life was great and it was like, yeah, it, I don't know, like, it was kind of weird, like, maybe, I don't know if I'm the only one or if, like, you've done that too, like, I don't know, but anyway, but then, like, I would, the guilt would set in and especially, like, when the, the bills were due and, like, oh, crap, like, I just spent that $300 on all this stuff and then I would be like okay do I return it I think that's like another reason why I would like kind of preserve it like maybe I can like I'll, I'll return some stuff do I really need this it's like what I should have done before I bought
about it and like really thought about do I need this or do I want this but at the time I had no I didn't like associate the two or I didn't like I wasn't able to like put all the pieces of the puzzle together but um so some a lot of the time like I would I can't pay this bill if I don't return at least some of it so I would turn it or sometimes when I was like kind of really low I think I would just try to justify keeping things like no like I deserve this like I work really hard and you know looking back it's like you know I shouldn't I shouldn't have to work so hard to buy something like if it's a need, it comes so easy. It's like, okay, I need food. I need, you know, sometimes you do need clothes. Like, you know, if you're going to like a wedding and you need something specific, like a, you know, bridesmaid's dress or whatever. But like, I shouldn't have to work so hard to talk myself in or out of a purchase. Like it shouldn't, that's kind of like red flag. Like you know that there's like a bigger underlying issue if you're like, having these inner conversations with yourself about something that you just purchased. Um, so, you know, kind of fast forwarding to like when I'm starting to do my self discovery and everything, like I really just realized that I used shopping as like a way to escape from the hardships, the the hurt and the pain, whatever pain I was feeling or like if I was feeling anxious or whatever, like it was my escape, but it wasn't a good escape. Like it didn't, it was, you know, if I was like on drugs, like it was a temporary fix. It didn't last very long. If anything, it like made things worse. And cause it would just create this snowball effect of, okay, I just spent $300 on clothes when I should have paid this bill. And now I'm, you know, negative in my account and then I had to pay a overdraft fee and like now I have to like, it just starts like this whole never ending spiral of, of guilt and debt and, you know, cause my credit started to get affected from it and for a long time, like I couldn't stop because like, I didn't know, like I didn't realize what was like, wrong with me. But, um, it just took, it took a long time to like kind of get to that point. I realistically, it's going to take a long time to kind of come out of that and like fix yourself or fix the way that you think about money, especially if you grew up with, with a certain type of relationship with money, it's going to take a while to, to fix that, you know? it's not going to happen overnight. Like, Oh, magically I'm fixed and I'm cured. And like, I just, we have no problems now. Um, so yeah, there was just, there was so much more to it than I even realized at the time. And so even if, you know, at the time, if I would have been like, all right, I'm just going to quit cold Turkey and I'm going to pay off my, pay off my debt and you know whatever whatever it wouldn't have happened because I think there were times when I would oh, I'm gonna stay strong and I'm gonna do this and I would just you know relapse and like go back fall back into old patterns because I didn't have a, a, a grasp on what the real problem really was and now that I know and I'm aware it's so much easier to go into a store and tell myself do you want this or do you need this is this a necessity of life will your world fall apart if you don't have this the answer is no and I put it back I have even gotten to the point where I can walk around with something and hold on to it and still have that detachment. Um, I think that comes from, so I was a, was technically like I still am and I still do, but like I had a, an organizing business. I was a professional organizer and that was super helpful being able to 
let go of materialistic things. Um, and that's when like the whole minimalism thing kind of came into my life and I started learning and discovering that. And I just I don't look at stuff the same way. And now I don't look at, or I have a different relationship with money and that has helped tremendously. Um, there's really not anything I can do or say that, because I don't, I don't know, like, you know, what your underlying issue, like, they could be totally different than mine. Um, so it's, it's your own journey, but I just wanted to post this video to kind of, like, open up this, these thoughts for you and, um, and share, like, my story because... You know, it, maybe it is similar. Um, you know, in America, we are known as, like, the keeping up with the Joneses type of culture. And, you know, oh, I want, I want that because they have it. I want the Range Rover because my neighbor has it. I want the mansion uh, because, you know, all my friends have mansions. Like, we want what other people have and we just want it's, we want more and we want more and we want more and I'm gonna do another video talking about how um, the practice of minimalism is really really good and really healthy for your relationship with money and how it correlates but um, yeah we just live in a society here that is like you know, money is king, and money can buy you out of problems, it can solve everything, it's just like this magical thing, and it, it can be, um, but it's also something that people literally murder other people for, and like, you know, people have murdered people over like $500 or something, like, it's... The fact that, like, money is this thing that's, like, so holy, when it's literally just, like, a piece of fancy paper, um, it kind of boils my blood a little bit, and it makes me angry to think about, like, how many lives have, were lost because of money, um, how many lives were ruined because of money, um, you know, there's, like, this false reality of, of money, and, like, the power that it has when like honestly it really it really doesn't um but yeah um so yeah like if this video is helpful for you please give it a like um if you want to hear more finance and money related topics please subscribe to my channel and leave comments down below um i would you know if you feel comfortable like sharing your stories with me i'd love to hear um you know, if you need any advice, like, I'm here offering, like, I don't ask anything in return. Um, I just want to help people. I want, I want money to stop being such a taboo topic. It's, it's something that, you know, finances and money, like, it's just a part of life. And there's nothing that we can really do about it. Like, um, but if we can all just have a good, healthy relationship with money, I think it'll make the world a better place.